Welcome into the Inside Indiana Show. I'm Editor-in-Chief Ken Bykoff, along with publisher Ed Magoni. And the Indiana Hoosiers open their season September 3rd against Ball State at Lucas Oil Stadium. Uh, first game for head coach uh, Kevin Wilson. Uh, games against Ball State, Ed, have, have been interesting over the past couple of years. It's, it's a series that the Hoosiers lead four games to one. They only lost back in 2008 in a game that featured a lot of emotion. It was an early season loss, a 42-20 to loss that saw Ball State's Dante Love uh, in his football career and on the field at Memorial Stadium. But in the past, you look at the 2006 game. Indiana was down big. Kellen Lewis came into the game and kind of sparked the resurgence for the Hoosiers under Terry Hepner. In 2007, it's actually the game that the Hoosiers wanted to become bowl eligible uh, for that year. They ended up having to beat Purdue, obviously, in the bucket game to, to reach that bowl. But, Ed, it being the first game of the season, what kind of impact and what kind of emotion can this have on, on the 2011 football season for the Hoosiers? I think it's a pretty big game, Ken, uh, just because more or less, you know, this is Kevin Wilson's first game. If you start off with a win, I think it sets the tone for the rest of the season. They're facing an in-state opponent who's going to be awfully fired up to be playing at Lucas Oil Stadium against an in-state rival like Indiana. The MAC always feels like they have, you know, they always seem to play the chip on their shoulder because they're the smaller conference against a BCS conference, particularly an in-state school like Indiana against Ball State. And I think everyone's going to be anxious to see, you know, just what Kevin Wilson's offense and defense are going to look like this season. I mean, we we, we haven't seen much in practice just bits and pieces, and no one knows if they're going to run an up-tempo all-the-time offense or just, you know, kind of piecemeal together with some up-tempo, some eye, some pistol, some under center, you know, and, and the defense is really, you know, we're all waiting to see what's going to happen there as well. So I think there's going to be a lot revealed, uh, certainly, and uh, hopefully, you know, when the game ends, the Hoosiers are on top. Well, it's going to be interesting to see how everything plays out, especially because head coach Kevin Wilson hasn't quite settled on a starting quarterback yet, and there's some talk that he actually won't make a decision on that position until game time. Now, Wilson is, uh, has, from day one, said it's not all that important who is the starter. Whoever goes out on the field uh, first isn't necessarily going to be considered the starter, and it's it's a position that he seems to think isn't quite as, as big a story as a lot of fans. I don't know. I haven't really... I mean, we're just... Not not as consumed with this, you guys. So they're all doing good. No one's really separated. I don't know if they're getting great support today. It was a great practice. First thing you know, a couple of days off. Guys were fresher, faster. Looked a lot better today. As you go through two days, a little wear and tear and some fatigue and stuff. I think it's it a little sloppy. So sometimes, you know, statistically or schematically, a guy might not be looking clean. You know, the other night we actually had two picks in the scrimmage. You guys watched. They were scripted picks, so we could <laughs> practice sudden change. Then you guys say, well, he threw a turnover. It was like, it was like throw it to him because we wanted to practice the, you know, <laughs> flipping it around a little bit. So, so you know, we, we got work to do on it. And, and at the same time, I don't want it where one guy goes out and makes a mistake, he's done. These guys have played so little. They're all, they all have a chance. They're all doing reasonably well. Getting a game setting, maybe a guy takes off, maybe doesn't. I don't see it being a revolving door, but I don't have a clear picture yet. Now, Ed, with Wilson not really – putting a lot of stock in who starts the game. What kind of impact could that have in terms of how that offense runs and the chemistry that he just has with the receivers? Well, I think uh, both quarterbacks, both first-team quarterbacks, have had quite a few reps with the with the first-team offense. You know, the, the for our, to a man, every receiver we've spoken with has said it doesn't really matter to them who's the quarterback. Now, whether or not that's true or whether or not that's just what they're saying to the media, that we'll, we'll see that, figure that out on Saturday. But, uh, you know, I think, I think both... Ed Wright Baker and uh, Dusty Killer are both more very capable quarterbacks. They've looked very capable in practices. Uh, Wilson did say that you know Red, Wright Baker throws a little bit better deep ball. He seemed to think, uh, but Dusty was the first one to really pick up the offense and, and understand the offense real well. But Ed Wright Baker's made up a lot of ground there as well. You know, I think it's uh, I think it's you know this is the final dress rehearsal for the quarterbacks in my opinion. I mean they've had all these practice reps and. You know, it's been a neck-and-neck neck battle so far. But at the same time, I think, you know, you, until you until you can actually be hit in a football game, like they're going to be hit on Saturday, and the offensive line has to actually block protecting a guy where they know he's not just going to get tagged or touched and be down, I think once you once you actually go to live action where, where it's all, phys, you know, the physicality goes up a notch, the speed goes up a notch, then you get to sort, you know, your starter from your backup, and then we'll see you know, who's actually going to be the star of the rest of the season. Because I'm pretty sure that Kevin Wilson wants to go with one guy and have one guy as his man 
uh, you know, for going into the Virginia game, and I don't think they're going to be shuffling quarterbacks once the Virginia game comes in two weeks. What I think is really fascinating about the whole situation is the fact that I think coming out of the spring, most people would have considered that Dusty Keel was kind of the leader in the clubhouse to take over the, the starting job for the team. But, of course, Ed Wright Baker has gone ahead and seemed to have stepped up his game. And in the limited practice time that we've seen, it seems that he's the one that's, that's really kind of kind of stepped up his game a little bit more than, than Dusty. Yeah, I would I would have to agree with you, Ken. I think that uh, Wright Baker has definitely looked the better of the two in the in the limited amount of footage, you know, in limited amount of snaps we've seen them play head, you know, head to head or at the same and during the same practice. I think Wright Baker's been a little bit sharper. He's carried out his fakes a little bit better uh, on play fakes and such. He's thrown pretty good deep balls. Very nice touch on all his passes. Timing routes have looked sharper, but uh, you know, we haven't seen, we've only seen really two full practices, so it's tough to say, you know, I mean, there was 19 of them, you know, or will be 19 of them by the time the kickoff comes, and, uh, you know, maybe maybe Dusty Keel looked better than the other 17, who knows, but uh, from what we've seen, certainly Ed Wright Baker will probably be the first one on the field come Saturday. Now, one thing that we do know for sure is that Matt Perez is going to be starting at running back. Uh, Perez, a redshirt freshman, a kid that put up huge numbers in high school, but he also hasn't played a college game yet. And even this, despite that fact, it, Kevin Wilson says that, that Perez is going to be getting a lot of carries and can really help the Hoosiers' running game. How, what kind of impact do you think that could have, especially with an offensive line that has played but maybe hasn't played a lot of games together? Well, I think uh, Matt Perez is the right choice at the running back just because he's a bigger back. He seems to run behind his pads pretty well. He makes he just makes he's very very instinctive runner. He can make the right cut, make the right decision. He sees openings and can shoot through them and get into the open field and break some arm tackles. And I think you know, uh, but on the other hand, the offensive line looked very strong to me, at least uh, run blocking. I don't know about pass protecting. Like I said, you know, it's tough to judge a pass rusher until they're allowed to go full throttle and come right at the quarterback. But they were opening some pretty good holes against IU's defensive front. Four and I use defensive front four should be pretty good this season. So, uh, you know, Matt Perez, if you combine the big back with the uh, with the offensive line play that it, we've seen in practice, I think they're going to be able to run the ball pretty successfully against Ball State. Now, of course, the Hoosiers uh, using Matt Perez, a redshirt freshman, in the lineup, but Ed. They're not going to hesitate to use a lot of true freshmen. I think they said the coaching staff said seven or eight or even nine true freshmen could play wide receivers such as uh, Jay McCants and and uh, Co um, Cody Latimer, Shane Wynn, are all guys that are going to get an opportunity to play. Now, with that kind of inexperience, is that a positive for the Hoosiers? And and what does it say just kind of about that talent level in that recruiting class that this coaching staff has repeatedly credited Bill Lynch? with bringing in and, and, and just working with that group? Well, I certainly think the, the freshman class is a talented one. And, and you know, like uh, Kevin Wilson keeps reminding everyone, this was the first full class recruited to the completed North End Zone facility. And this is the pro the byproduct of that, that those new facilities is this up enhanced, talented, speed, physicality, strength across the board recruiting class. And, uh, you know, Shane Wynn's going to be returning kickoffs. Uh, D'Angelo Roberts is certainly going to get some carries at running back. Like you said, Cody Latimer, Jay McCants. Uh, Shane Wynn will also play in the slot a little bit. And, uh, you know, they have a couple of uh, freshman offensive linemen in the two deep. I mean, it's, it's um, you know, just in, in defensive backfield as well, there's going to be a couple of guys. It's it's an impressive class. There's no question about it. I just think uh, they, it has the speed that, that uh, can make IU more competitive, and uh, has the, the the natural talent that IU has lacked, not necessarily across the board, but in the in previous seasons, you know, uh, last two or three four seasons, they didn't have the the upper echelon talent pool to to work with. I think this is the first installment of that new talent pool. And the coaching staff seems to have a lot of confidence in, in the freshmen, especially co-defensive coordinator Doug Mallory said that he's not worried at all about what the freshmen, uh, if the freshmen are ready on the field. Again, the two safety spots, you know, I feel good about the two young kids. You know, I wouldn't blink an eye putting them in right now. You know, I feel good with where we're at with Jarrell and with Chris and Donnell. You know, like those three guys, the seniors from the safety position, they've done a great job. And I think all three of those guys are better than they were at any point in the spring. But I feel like the, the two young kids have, have gone, they've earned an opportunity to play. And 
I said, I'm, you know, through injury or through rotation, you know, I plan on playing those kids. Well, defense Ed is certainly going to be a key to the game. And when we come back, we'll talk to InsideIndiana.com writer Zach Osterman for his keys to the game. Welcome back into the Inside Indiana show. Now, Ed, the Hoosiers are going to be taking on uh, Ball State at Lucas Oil Stadium uh, on Saturday. But right now out of Memorial Stadium, we have InsideIndiana.com writer Zach Osterman. Zach, how are you doing? Pretty good, Ken. How about you? Well, Zach, in our last segment, we talked about uh, the defense and how it's going to be one of the keys to the game. What are some of your keys to the game as you see them? Ken, I think one of the things that, that Kevin Wilson touched on tonight was was how comfortable will the team be with the new schemes, with the offense, with the defense, and, and if, if they're comfortable, they'll be able to play faster, they'll be able to play a little bit harder, they won't be thinking about things as much, they won't be a little bit, they won't be concerned about their own play as much. I think that's a, maybe an important broad thing. I think more specifically, I think you're going to need a, a strong run game. Um, we, without knowing who the quarterback is, and it sounds more and more like we're going to see some sort of rotation on Saturday night. I think you'd like to know that you're at least going to have a good, reliable run game and be able to control the game that way if you need to. And then, you know, I think obviously defensively, don't give up big plays. Don't, don't, don't give Ball State reason early because I think it's fair to, to presume Indiana is favored in this game. It's going to be played at Lucas Oil, probably in front of an Indiana partisan crowd. So don't give Ball State, you know, a lot of early reasons to feel like they can jump up and win this one. Because I know I I talked uh, even today I talked to the Ball State writer at the Muncie Star Press and he told me that, you know, the, even the feeling around the program up there is that you know it's not so much this year as maybe building toward the future is is sort of the attitude that they're taking. It's a first year staff and maybe they don't expect a lot from this team this year. So if, if Indiana can come out, establish a run game, control the ball, control the clock, and play solid sound defense, I think maybe you know you could see them pull away third quarter, somewhere like that. And Zach, uh, where do you see some of the challenges for the defense being this weekend? Yeah, you know, it, it, it's going to be interesting because Ball State has a couple of guys at wide receiver that I think uh, could be some trouble, but nobody really consistent. Um, and there's a lot of questions at running back. I think really one of the big challenges uh, is going to be knowing who they're going to face. What what are these guys going to be able to do? The the probable starting running back for Ball State is a guy who uh, walked on at Northern Illinois and then transferred to Ball State in the offseason. There are a couple guys ahead of him that got hurt. Uh, their leading rusher from last year left the team in the summer. Um, I know it's going to be a pass-heavy offense, so I think you're going to see Indiana's secondary and probably Probably some of their, their nickelback uh, players, some of their more mobile uh, linebackers like Leon Beckham probably going to be challenged early. But I think it's, it's going to be figuring out quickly uh, what Ball State can do I think is going to be a really big challenge and, and trying to sort of put their finger on where they can hurt Ball State or maybe control Ball State's pass offense the most. Now Zach, of course, they're going to be playing out at Lucas Oil Stadium as we said earlier. You know, for a season opener, a neutral side game, what can kind of the impact be of playing in an NFL venue, someplace that they're going to be holding the Super Bowl this year, and just kind of that impact that it's going to have on the players? Yeah, Ken, you know, I, I think uh, it, the impact is sort of what they make it to be. I know they've practiced up there once. We, I think Will Matty told us that yesterday. Um, you know, it, I don't think it's going to be a sort of a bright lights, big city thing. I mean, these are all Big Ten players except for the freshmen. They all certainly know what it feels like to play in big games, to play on national TV. Um, but at the same time, you can't get scared by the size of a place like Lucas Oil. You can't sort of be awed by knowing that it's an NFL stadium, knowing that, that it's going to host a Super Bowl, that it's going to host Big Ten title games, um, that it's hosted the Final Four before. 
So I, I think it really just kind of comes in and maybe sort of narrowing that out of their minds and just seeing the field and just thinking at least initially about uh, sort of establishing themselves and what they want to do well. And then, you know, maybe you get the chance if, if you pull away late to soak it up and enjoy the, the fact that you're playing in an NFL uh, facility. Well, Zach, we appreciate your work out at Memorial Stadium, and we look forward to having you in studio with us next week. Now, Ed, of course, this is a Ball State home game. This is uh, the Hoosier season opener, but it's a Ball State home game. It's at Lucas Oil Stadium, and the fact that uh, ticket sales haven't quite been what I think the Hoosiers and, and Ball State expected has been uh, a little bit of a surprise, and certainly it's, a, it's something that Kevin Wilson addressed in his press conference. Well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's not, you know, it doesn't have great – you know, TV pickup as far as what we're getting. So, you know, I don't know if you're going to get a bunch of sports center news and all that deal. It's kind of great for our fans. I'd like to, I was, I, I heard some numbers of the ticket sales, which were a little disappointing. I mean, I'd like to think we'd have a, a lot of fans with all our alumni base up there. Even though it's Ball State's home game, I would, I would encourage our fans to come out and have some interest in what we're doing and, you know, and, and, and I'd like to have a great turnout there. That'll be interesting to see. Uh, but I do think it is neat for our kids, a lot of Indiana kids growing up in this region. Some of them have played high school games there, I'm sure, but a chance to play in that arena is pretty cool. Big Ten championship game there the next five years, Super Bowl on that field this year. I mean, it's an exciting venue, and we look, you know, we look forward. I think it's going to be a great deal. Love, love again to have some great visibility with media, with TV, and with fan, but, you know, that's, that's to be announced. Well, let's face it, one of the, the biggest issues is that IU fans are going to take a wait-and-see approach, most of them, I think, with this uh, football program. You win, and fans are going to come to the games. It, it, it's, it's pretty much that simple. And you build a kind of personality that uh, uh, fans want to watch, and that's going to be something that, that they're going to want to come out and see. So, you know, my question to you, Ed, is what kind of personality do you expect uh, uh, you're going to see from this group? Well, I think you're going to see an intense, the most intense group of Hoosiers that we've seen in, in, since Terry Hepner was the head coach of Indiana football. I don't think these... These guys all have a sense of urgency to win. I think they've been through a rough training camp. They want to take it out on someone else, and I think they're going to come out and take it out on Ball State on Saturday. I mean, you just you, you talk to the players, and they say that practices are designed to be harder than the games. And I haven't heard talk like that since probably when I lived in Pennsylvania, and you used to hear that from Penn State's players under when Joe Paterno was in his heyday. I mean, they used to always con comment about how you know, his practices were so hard that by Saturday you were just excited to play someone else because it was so intense during the week that it was almost like a vacation to go and play someone else on Saturdays. And I think Kevin Wilson's kind of bred that same type of atmosphere around his training camp this summer. And I think when they go to Ball St when they go up to play Ball State at Lucas Oil, I think it's going to come out on the field and they're going to be a very hard-hitting, intense group of, uh, you know, pursue the ball and attack the line of scrimmage and really get after them. Well, certainly finding the, uh, an identity, finding a personality is key to any team, whether it be uh, basketball, football, whatever it is. Uh, Co-offensive coordinator Kevin Johns was asked just about that at this week's press conference, and he said that it's something that's kind of a work in progress. Um, the personality of our offense, uh, that's an interesting question. I, I think we still, as coaches coming out of camp, are still trying to determine what's our best 11, who is our best 11. Um, and so with that being said, I think that will establish more of our personality. You know, as we, as we go into this first game, um, I think you'll see a lot of backs rotate in. I think you'll see a lot of receivers rotate in, um, tight ends. You know, so, so I think we as coaches are still trying to, to determine that. Um, and as we go on, hopefully things will become a little bit more clear as to, as to who we are um, and exactly what our personality is. Well, as the Hoosiers try to find their personality, we're going to bring in a little bit more personality with Inside Indiana. Sean Morrison will be joining us right after this.
Welcome back into the Inside Indiana Show, where it's time for our roundtable discussion. Bring in Inside Indiana, Sean Morrison. And Sean, from where this team was in the spring to where they they worked in the summer to where they are now, is this a ball club that's ready for its season opener? Well, we can only really tell once they get on the field and we see them perform. But from talking with players, there seems to be a lot more confidence in the way they carry themselves, the way they go about things on the practice field. I mean, Andrew McDonald, senior offensive lineman for them, said immediately 10 times better than they thought they were last year than they thought they were in the spring even. So I feel like them, the defensive line, pretty much every experienced position feels a lot better about themselves. And on top of that, Kevin Wilson said eight or nine true freshmen might be playing on Saturday and they also seem to be carrying themselves very well and beginning the hang of things relatively quickly. This is a kind of a situation, I think, where you have this team just feels like this is what college football is supposed to feel like, that the camp was hard enough, like you said earlier, Ed, just about the fact that they're considering games to be something that are going to be the easy part of it. I mean, just talking to the players, I, I know I know me, it just seems that they, they really feel that that this is a team that could do something special, and it's a belief that the coaches have put into them. Oh, absolutely. I think uh, Kevin John said it yesterday. He said um, that you know Demarlo Belcher is ready to lead as a senior, and he's ready, ready to find to guide the team back to where they they believe they should be in you know bowl contention and all that. You know, towards the upper part of the Big Ten, not necessarily the doormat of the Big Ten, as they've been seen by so many analysts over the last couple of years. And I think I think that's all that's all part of Kevin Wilson's new mindset. I mean, he came in here, he instilled confidence in the players. He's worked them re- really hard. He know they know they're ready. They don't think they're ready. They know they're ready for this game against Ball State and the season in its in its entirety. And I think they're going to come out and perform that way. With the, with the whole group of coaches, I mean, obviously there's there's plenty of talent on this team, and I've I've told people for for years that there is talent on this roster. It just wasn't performing on the field, and for as close as they were last year in so many games, I mean, you know, to me, it is the little things that are going to put them over the top, and that's something they have to deal with, having a quarterback that's not a fifth-year senior like with Ben Chappell last year. There there are questions that they have, but from a talent standpoint, this certainly seems like a ball club that could, could I'm, I'm not going to call a bowl for this team. I'm not ready to do that. We haven't seen them play a game yet. But certainly from a talent standpoint, on paper, I think this is a team that might be able to surprise some people. Well, yeah, I mean, even looking at just the positions outside of quarterback, where there are quite a few questions right now, I mean, running back, they've got some depth. Wide receiver, they have a lot of depth. On offense, they look like they could definitely be a powerful team, defensively even, in terms of the improvements that they've had. It looks like they've made a lot of strides. Their secondary was a huge problem last year, and the coaches seem to have no qualms with it this year, which is actually saying a lot, given how many points they gave up last year. So... That, that kind of confidence, especially from Kevin Wilson's staff, doesn't spring from absolutely nothing. They're going to be very honest about whether or not they feel like their team is ready. And hearing it from them, they could be throwing a little bit of smoke in mirrors, but I really doubt that that's the case. Ken, I think you mentioned, in, in addition to what Sean just said, I think you mentioned it, you know, this team has always had talent, and I think it's a matter of developing the talent, and it not, wasn't necessarily getting the development it needed under the old coaching staff. I mean... I hate to say that because they were all good guys, but you looked at Roger Saffold, and he came in and started as a freshman. He didn't really necessarily get that much better by his senior year, but then the Rams took him in the second round, and suddenly he's starting, you know, predicting the blind side of Sam Bradford, who's a you know hundred million dollar quarterback, and he's doing a good job of it. Tracy Porter, you know, he went in the third round or fourth round, I believe, and he goes down and, and he makes second round pick. Oh, second yeah. round. Yeah. Second round pick, and he uh, he goes down to, to New Orleans, makes two of the biggest plays in that franchise's history, back to back games. I mean, it's 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 that kind of it's that kind of um, development once they got the coaching they needed, you know, at the next level in this case. But now they're getting that type of coaching every day. To, you know, you can see how the, the, the you know what coaching means to a player in his in his development. And certainly, I think uh, this coaching staff can develop these players and the talent that's been here uh, faster. And I think we've seen that throughout the spring and through the fall. I think you see guys who, who like Dre Muhammad, for instance, never even got a chance. He's going to be, he's going to see significant playing time on Saturday. Uh, you know, just guys like that. The other, the the offensive linemen who aren't necessarily returning starters have gotten so much better just under Greg Fry for us for a fall and a spring. 
I just think the 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 massive development of this team from the spring, and you know the the new nutrition program, the strength and conditioning program, and the and the and the hands-on coaching they're receiving on a daily basis is going to make this team so much better that people didn't realize that the Indiana ever had this much talent. Well, and that that uh, to me also goes back to that commitment of of everything to where you have a, a program that is putting the money into the the program as well with the dietitian with raising the coach's salary making Indiana a more attractive place to come and that that to me you you're going to get what you pay for a little bit when it comes to coaching and you know the talent is there the the old staff did a great job of recruiting especially Billy Lynch who I think never got enough uh, credit for bringing in as as much talent as he did but to me that that's a, a big part of the equation just the fact that they have spent the money to make the program attractive to coaches and players it's definitely one of those things that I mean, being able to make that investment into the team has really helped Kevin Wilson be able to get his players to buy in as well because from the past, I mean, just the attitude around the program was it was a secondary kind of thing. Indiana's a basketball school. Football is just kind of there to help build a little bit of revenue. And the way that this has shaped up over this year is that football still secondary to basketball at this school, obviously, but it's, it's becoming a much bigger deal not only to the people in the athletic department but to the fans, to the students and even to the players and coaches it's been made very clear and Kevin Wilson throughout his entire time here has had a mentality of 80 10 10 for games which is 80 percent attitude 10 percent physicality and then 10 percent luck to win these types of games so the fact that the attitude among these players has been pushed forward so much and it's the confidence that's there will go and help them in leaps and bounds and then really it's only that last 20 percent can they be physical can they put their presence on the ball and then can they get a couple of breaks here and there? Well, and, and it is an investment to me that if you're going to turn this program around, you've got to spend the money to do it. If you spend the money to do it to bring in better um, a better uh, caliber of coach, they're going to bring in better recruits. People are going to start coming to games because you're going to start winning. They're going to start enjoying the style that they have, and you're going to start filling seats. You start to change that, that atmosphere a little bit to where it's not just a basketball school, but it's a football school as well. And I think that certainly Fred Glass has taken that first step towards towards fulfilling that goal and putting that investment into the program. Oh, there's no question about that, Ken. I think, uh, you know, just the, the budget that they, they, they allowed Kevin Wilson to use on his assistant coaches was, you know, a huge, huge step in that direction. And you look at what the staff has been able to put together, and that's why the players are going to get that much better, because they have good assistant coaches now and they have a lot of good assistant coaches now and uh, you know you, you, that's going to pay off dividends there's no question on the, on the field and in recruiting all right on the spot guys who wins on Saturday I'd have to say without seeing them that much it's really tough to tell but um, I'd have to go with IU for this one because just looking at the way that they've played not seeing that much of Ball State but the differences in IU's talent level and also in their confidence I think will definitely pay dividends for them on this game right. I think uh, Sean said that you know the confidence is really going to come into effect effect here. I don't think Indiana thinks Ball State should be be able to beat them, and I don't think they will beat them. Um, I also think that Indiana's physicality. I think we're going to see that ten percent of the physicality on on uh, on the line play. I think Indiana's offensive line is going to be able to move Ball State's offensive line around. And they're going to be able to establish a running game, and it's not going to matter who's under center the most because. Uh, IU and Matt Perez and Stephen Houston and D'Angelo Roberts are going to make some serious uh, pushes down the field just on the ground, and then uh, the quarterback will settle in and they'll take care of itself. Yeah, with the, with the changes that I've made in coaching, you talk about attitude, all of that. The Hoosiers weren't that far away last year. I think that the changes that they made will do it this year. I think Indiana wins this one on Saturday. Uh, it should be an interesting game. I don't know if it'll be a close one. I don't know if it'll be uh, a tight one, but certainly it's going to be uh, – I think the Hoosiers are going to come out victorious in this one and, and walk away with their eighth straight season opening win. Uh, for us, we're going to be wrapping it up here when we come back right after this.
Well, that's all the time we have on the Inside Indiana show this week. Be sure to go to InsideIndiana.com to check out all the latest news on re recruiting for football and basketball, plus our coverage of Indiana's game against Ball State this weekend. For Ed Magoni and Sean Morrison, I'm Ken Bykoff. Thanks for watching and pace yourselves.